What is good, everyone? My name is Orlando, and this is Friday Night Football. Let's go. You called it. You told us we had to be there for a Mount Hood Conference rivalry game between Barlow and Clackamas, who brought us plenty of drama. This is your Game of the Week. There were 28,000 votes this week, and more than half of them went to this game. It was a battle. Home team strikes first. Maddox Mahara. That gets the people going. Just like that, it's 7-0. To the fourth quarter, Blake Baker, the playmaker, hits Cooper Belts. 11-yard touchdown. Clackamas on top, 14-7. Four minutes left. Jet Faye. Can't stop, won't stop, ring him up. Just like that, it's tied at 14. Under 30 seconds left. Cavaliers with a shot to win it. Field goal blocked. We're going to overtime. Bruins with a steady dose of ground and pound. Hunter McDonald would not be denied. Get off me. Barlow's first lead of the game. Clackamas with a chance to answer, but the Bruins defense having none of that. Silas Bugen sack, then it's Jack Poirier. Clutch. So it all comes down to this. Fourth down, and it's the freshman. Caleb Perry, turn out the lights. Interception in the end zone. Bruins rush the field. Barlow wins a thriller. 21-14 in overtime. Whoa. Nelson visiting Central Catholic. It's always good to do some studying, even on the sidelines. Crew Newman, he was paying attention. Goes for the long ball to Zyel Smith. Later, we've got trickery. Michael Williams decides he wants to play QB, and there's his top receiver, Crew Newman. Rams cruise to a 35-7 victory at Hillsborough Stadium. Let's head down to Hare Field. The Hillsborough Spartans hosting Centennial. Hillsborough, what is good? Third quarter, Spartans in the red zone. Ian Ingram, oh, that's nice. 10 yards slant to Jaden Echevarria. Makes it 28, nada. Then the Spartan defense takes over. Preston Echevarria. Coming for that QB. Hillsboro gets the shutout. 35 nothing over Centennial. Up in Washington, a trip to Kiggins Bowl looks much different this year. New renovations at the iconic stadium are done. The Skyview Storm, Two and one so far, hosting a team they knocked out of last year's playoffs. Kamayak, first quarter. Trey Jacob putting in that work. Bounces to the outside, hits the truck button. Oh, that's a TD. Skyview in control early. The storm moving again. Jake Kennedy calls his own number. So nice. We'll go ahead and show it to you twice. Slow mo, always prettier, right? Skyview gets a 48-20 victory. They're now 3-1 on the season. Raise your hand if you thought Camus would start the season 0-3. No, I didn't. Papermakers hosting the Kelso Highlanders. So where do you get one of those giant football players at? I'm just asking for a friend. Taylor Yanni, he's got a friend. His name is Trenton Swanson. 52-yard connection. They make that look so easy. The Highlanders defense responds. Ethan Mitchell, right place, right time, picks off the pass. We call that a pick six, and we're hitting fast forward. No panic in the papermakers, though, because they've got Reed Tennant at a tough offensive line. He's in for six. Camus gets his first win of the season, 45-21. Battleground visiting Heritage at McKenzie Stadium. Tigers through the air. That's Cameron Spencer hooking up with Angel Lopez. 14-0 Battleground. Later, Spencer getting his steps in. The scramble, and there's Artem Banyuk. We need that fast forward button again, folks, because nobody touches that man. Tigers dominate. Battleground gets its second win of the year. Down in Silverton, the defending champs, two and one, 
hosting an undefeated South Albany squad. Great atmosphere. The band setting the tone for Silverton. Oh, and there's the Fox in the house. South Albany had the momentum though. Caden Younger, the strike to Deshaun Gilliam. He goes in for the score. Looked like the Red Hawks would take it. Just over three minutes left. Fox is with the ball at their own seven, and they went on an epic drive. This was a key play. The flame flicker, Carson Waffles to Cohen Mulek. He's out of bounds near the goal line. You know what time it is. Jackson Pfeiffer, he's a regular on the show. Punches it in from a yard out with 30 seconds left. Foxes win it 39-35. Dallas down at West Albany. The Dragons defense breathing that fire. Fumbo! Dallas recovers and they're opening up the playbook. Dalton Baker dumps it off to Caden Moore who tosses it to a wide open Isaiah Mosley. Dallas gets the W over a team that beat them twice last year. 26-21, your final. Week four brought us what looked like a major matchup in Westland. Fresh off a big W at Jesuit, the Lions hosting Washington's top ranked team, the Lake Stevens Vikings. But the visitors had no answer for Sam Levitt and company. Third quarter, the WSU commit right down the middle to Mark Hamper. That man is a beast. Westland up 42 nothing at that point, And the Lions making a statement. 45-6 over Lake Stevens. Tualatin hosting Westview. Oh, we need one of those giant Timberwolves at the studio. Defense is feasting early. Tualatin jumps on the fumble. That set up Jack Wagner, who finds a AJ Nolan. Saves it from the turf monster. That's good for a score. Westview's D answers, supplying that pressure. Another fumble. Wildcats cashing out. That sets up Jordan Fisher into the crib from seven yards out. This game belonged to the home team. Tualatin holds on for a 35-16 victory. Let's head north to Tiger. Tigers facing off with the Liberty Falcons. Liberty striking in the first quarter. Houston Lee Perry speed on 99. No one touches him. Tigard answers with power. Connor Grant won't take no for an answer. Tigers D, you're up. You're taking center stage. And they put on the pressure. Ball is up and Reese Hare gets every defender's dream. Pick six on Friday Night Football. Tigard pulls away in the second half for a 40 to seven win at home. Thursday night brought us another top 10 matchup. Eighth ranked Sherwood hosting fifth ranked Jesuit. So let's roll to Sherwood. They always bring it there. And shout out to the band. Bowman with a strong start to the season, but they ran into a buzzsaw. Jesuit Crusaders own the line of scrimmage. And if you're looking for Peyton Roth, he basically lives in the end zone. It's what he does. Defense relentless. Lonnie Burt supplying that hurt. That's an interception. And the route was on. Crusaders get the W in a 42-0 shutout. It's the 500th win in school history. We head north, up to Mountainside. Undefeated Mavericks hosting Newburgh on Thursday night. You could say the mood in Beaverton, bananas. Alex Ingles, ready to mingle. It's Braden Bow. He gone. 79 yards, Mountainside up 14 to seven. We're still in the second quarter. Tigers respond. Gannon Williams, what's popping? That's worth six on the scoreboard. But the night belonged to the Mavericks. This just too pretty. Samuel Pimentel, have some. Mountainside gets a 49-28 win. We did the math, it's the 24th in school history. They're 4-0. Sunset hosting Lake Ridge. Second quarter, we've got action. Drew Knees cooking. Blake Hurley moving those chains. That's a 40 yard completion. More knees please. And he's got options. Jason Cox to the house. 
All right, let's get to the third quarter. Pacers defense had enough of that. Luke Brooks, right place, right time, safe. That's an interception. Lakeridge in business. Chili Stevens, Jr., welcome to the show. Lakeridge wasn't messing around. 42-14, the final.